gonna show you the Jesuit roots of the Illuminati. And I'm doing this video because I used to be into the whole what's called the Christian truther movement. In this, uh, essentially, it's Illuminati. You know, a lot of it is very sensational. I'll just come out and say it. You can see in some of my earlier vid earlier videos, even in some of my channels uh, back when I was part of the new IFB cult, I was making a lot of Illuminati exposed and everything else. And you know, even after I started this channel, did some of that stuff. Uh, but one thing I, you'll notice about a lot of these truthers is that they won't point out the fact that the Illuminati is Jesuitical. The founder of the Illuminati is Jesuitical. And like I said, it's very sensational. It's all about pointing out Illuminati symbolism here and there. And, you know, I was never really in it for the money per se, but I think a lot of these bigger truther channels are in it because it does give it a lot of money. It's clickbait and everything else, whole other side issue. But uh, the Illuminati, because even some of my earlier videos, I show Illuminati symbolism in various Hollywood, you know, fil films and in the music industry. And it is most certainly there, you know, uh, the God of this world is who these people serve. But one thing that's usually neglected to be pointed out is the fact that the Illuminati is Jesuit. The guy who founded it was a Freemasonic Jesuit. Okay, His name is uh, Adam Weisupt. That's the thing. And I'll read this, uh, you can just look up uh, who he is. The Illuminati, go on Britannica. They have a whole section about the uh, history of the Illuminati. And I'm going to read that for you right now. The Illuminati is essentially just a Jesuit, another one of the Jesuit controlled secret societies, just like the Freemasons. So this is on the article, uh, Britannica.com about the Illuminati. This is on their section about the early Illuminati. It says, according to adherents, the source of, quote, light was viewed as being directly communicated from a higher source due to the clarified and, or sorry, due to a clarified and exalted condition of human intelligence, kind of like Luciferianism, that's all that it is, to a former class belonging belong to the Ama Brados, enlightened in Spain, Spanish historian Marcin, Marcelino, I'm probably not saying these names right, first finds the name in about 1492, but traces them back to Gnostic origin, uh, and thinks her views were promoted in Spain through influences from Italy. One of the earliest leaders, indeed some scholars, style her as a pre Amenbredo, uh, was Maria de Santo Domingo, who came to be known as La Vida de Pai, I'm probably not saying the Spanish name right, so... Anyone who's in the Spanish, in the anyone who's Spanish in the comment section, just bear with me. Who she was a laborer's daughter, born in Alden Uver, Inver, whatever. Basically, it was she was born in 1485. She joined the Dominican Order, a Catholic order, as a teenager, and soon achieved uh, the sort of achieved renown as a prophet and mystic who could convince who could converse directly with Jesus Christ and the Virgin. Ferdinand of Aragon invited her to his court and became, became convinced of the sincerity of her visions. Here you have the origins of the demonic, uh, charismatic, you know, visions of Jesus Christ. They'll talk about Jesus Christ, you know, appearing to them, whatever else. It's Roman Catholic and, and Gnostic and Luciferian. The charismatic movement uh, is completely demonic. I did a video showing the, the uh, Roman Catholic roots of these charismatic counterfeit gifts. The charismatic movement is just simply doing, uh, it's no different than what Luciferians do, what the Jesuits do, what the Illuminati do. It's, the, it's Satan appearing as an angel of light. I'll just put it bluntly like that. But he says, uh, Dominicans appealed to uh, Pope Julius II for guidance and a series of travels, trials uh, con uh, conveyed under the auspices of the Inquisition. Her patrons were uh, included not only Ferdinand, but also Francisco Cardinal Jimenez de Cis in Eros, the Duke of Alba, and she that, ensure that no decision was taken against her. She was cleared again in 1510. Yeah, because they're all Luciferians. So the, the Illuminati is Catholic. That's all that it is. St. Igna uh, Ignatius of Loyola, the Jesuit, the founder of the Jesuits, uh, while studying at Salamanca in 1527, was brought before an ecclesiastical commission on a charge of sympathy with Elam Bredos, but he escaped with an admonition. Others were not so fortunate. In 1529, a congregation of unlettered adherents at Toledo were visited with scourging and imprisonment. Greater rigors followed uh, for about a century. Alam Bredos afforded many victims to the Inquisition, especially at Cora Ob Corda Oba, whatever. How, what, how come the Jesuit got away with it, huh? Why did the founder of the Jesuits get away with it? So the founder of the Jesuit get only just, oh, an admonition, but everyone else got killed for it. Well, because they were the highest level witches during that time period. And these other people they're burning at the stake are just simply their competition. See, the, the witches they're burning at the stake they may have been real witches. A lot of them were just the saints of God that they were accusing of witchcraft, but the real witches they were burning at the stake were just simply not as powerful as them. They were competition. The real witch, the real witches were in the seat of the papacy. 
So now you have the Bavarian Illuminati in the article continuing on. Perhaps the most the mo the group most closely associated, but sorry to, before I go on, basically the point is, is that the Illuminati was Catholic and Jesuit in origin. The Jesuit founder admired the Illuminati, their their occult Luciferian practices. But here you have the Bavarian Illuminati. Perhaps the group most closely associated with the name Illuminati was a short-lived movement of the Republican uh, Free Thought founded on May Day 1776 by Adam Weissem, professor of, of canon law, Roman Catholic law, at Ingo Lestat, and a former Jesuit. Hmm. The members of the secret societies called themselves uh, perfectibilists, whatever, uh, the founder's aim was to replace Christianity with the with the religion of reason, as later the, did the revolutionaries of France in the 19th century. Positive positivist philosopher Augustine Comet, again I'm not saying this right, probably. The order was organized along Jesuit lines and kept internal discipline and a system of mutual surveillance based on that model. Their model of the Jesuits, kind of like Hitler's SS. Its members pledged allegiance to their superiors and were divided into three main classes. The first included novices, minerals and lesser Illuminati, the second consisted of Freemasons, or Scottish Knight Freemasons, and the third, or mystery class, comprised, sorry, comprised two grades of priest and regent, as well as magis and king. So they're modeled after the Jesuit order. As we see a lot of these truths, they won't point the fact out that the Illuminati is Jesuit. It was started by a Jesuit, it was praised, it was before the official Illuminati group started, the concepts of the Illuminati that they push was you know, praised by the Jesuit leader, the Jesuit founder. But continuing on in the article, uh, beginning with a narrow circle of disciples carefully selected from among his own students, Weissett gradually extended his recruitment uh, efforts from Ingolstadt to Munich, of course, to Munich, and everywhere else with special attention had been given to the enlistment of young men of wealth and rank and social importance. From 1778 onwards, Weissett's Illuminati began to make contact with various Masonic lodges, where, under the impulse of Adolf Franz Frederick, Oh, sorry, I can't pronounce these German names, one of their chief converts, they often managed to gain a commanding position. It was to Kigi that the society was indebted, indebted, sorry, indebted extreme, sorry, and for an extremely elaborate constitution, never however actually realized, as well as its internal communication system, each member of the order had been given a special name, generally classical, by which alone was to be addressed in official writing. Weissett was referred to as Spartacus, while Kin Kingi was referred to as uh, Philo, I guess I say it. All internal correspondence were conducted in Kiefer, and to increase mystification, towns and provinces were invested with new and altogether arbitrary designations. No different than the secret society, you know, uh, outline of the Jesuits, how they function, the Freemasons. Why? Because they're all the same Luciferian ideology, the spirit of Antichrist, and the Illuminati is Jesuit, is Jesuitical. And unfortunately, none of these truthers, and I was guilty of this too, of not pointing out the fact that. You know all these Illuminati symbolism. So you have all these videos about Illuminati symbolism in Hollywood, without pointing out the fact that it's Jesuit controlled. A lot of these Hollywood celebrities went to Jesuit schools. They meet with the Pope and everything else. When, and by the way, when they're meeting with the Pope, it's not out of respect. It's because that's who their boss is. And if they don't submit to the Pope, well, they would not be in the kind of celebrity status that they would have right now. So they would not have that celebrity status. I meant to say, because the Pope is who gives them that power. The Jesuit Illuminati. You know. Plain and simple. That's why you go to the Vatican, you know, see all kinds of Illuminati, all seeing eye symbolism, you know, symbolism everywhere. I did a video showing that. The occultic Illuminati, all they call it the eye of providence. You know, what what's that doing at the Vatican? Well, because they're all the same Luciferian spirit. Plain and simple. Same thing with the charismatic movement. They're they're phony mirror they're they're I mean I should say phony because I believe they are real. They're just simply devil spirits mimicking the gifts of the spirit. It's no different. It's all Luciferianism, plain and simple. So yeah, that's, that's who founded the Illuminati. Adam Weissib, he was a Freemason and a Jesuit. He was a, a former Jesuit. Sure he was, yeah. I guess is why he modeled his whole system after the Jesuit order. Kind of like how the SS was modeled after the Jesuit order. Plain and simple. Yeah, all roads do lead to Rome. It's not just some kind of, oh, it's, it's a cool, cool little catchy phrase. It's just the truth. All these secret societies, the Skull and Bones and, and the Masons and the Illuminati, all goes right back to that you know, Revelation 17, 18, Harlot of Rome. So anyway, we wanted to show you guys that. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.